Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the AMA session with Uwe Schindler uh, about what's new in Lucene 9. Um, Uwe is a committer and PMC member of the Apache Lucene uh, and Solar project. And he's worked on uh, a lot of uh, interesting Lucene features like the fast numerical search and is maintaining the new attribute based uh, text analysis API. Um, he works as the managing director for SD Data Solutions in Bremen uh, that provides consulting and support for Apache, Lucene, Solar, and Elasticsearch. Um, he also works for Pangea, uh, where he implemented uh, the portal's geospatial retrieval functions uh, with, uh, with Lucene. Uh, so welcome, uh, Uwe. Hi. Uh, so thank you for the introduction. And I'm glad uh, to answer all your questions today that you could imagine about <laughs> um, uh, Lucy 9. So in general, um, maybe the first thing that I want to start with is before the questions, I hope they are coming in already, um, is to talk, uh, give you some some short overview what will come uh, with Lucene 9 and maybe also some a uh, little bit of short background of Lucene uh, 8 because um, the interesting thing with Lucene 9 in short, if you would say it, there are two new main features which, uh, which are the important changes. One is we are you moving to Java 11, yeah. And the second one is uh, they are currently work going on to implement Gradle as um, as a build system. So that's something which is more interesting for the for the developers. So that are the most uh, often seen new features. The other ones which are also uh, included are in most cases also backported to the Lucene 8.6 series and in general to Lucene 8. So uh, in most cases, when we have a new Lucene version, it's just uh, the breaking changes coming in. And uh, more or less, uh, the breaking change here is uh, that you have to switch to Java 11. And for the developers, it's great. But we also updated a lot of stuff like, uh, for example, analyzers. We have new snowball analyzers. Uh, for new languages and also the old ones were updated, so they should be faster now because uh, the auto-generated code was updated. And there are some changes, but because they are breaking backwards compatibility, they are new. But most of the other stuff was already backported um, to uh, Java 8. And, and one of the main features, uh, no, sorry, Lucene 8, and one of the main features, so there are three things that you can ask questions today too are about um, the, the so-called early circuits of queries, which is called the Blockmax uh, one, uh, which is um, if you don't need the exact number of results uh, of a query, you can short circuit if you know that some of the documents will never match because they cannot be in the top 10. So that's a new feature which is steadily involved uh, to affect more queries, um, and uh, that's very, very important. Uh, the second step is, which is an ongoing process in Lucene 8, is step-by-step uh, step moving away uh, the index parts um, that are currently mostly, or in previous versions were mostly located on the heap to move them off heap. So that means uh, the index files are only memory mapped and uh, to run, for example, your Solar or Elasticsearch cluster, you only need very few heap space. Uh, mainly, you only need the heap space for uh, for managing your cluster, like the, the cluster state and all that stuff. But for executing queries and um, doing aggregations or faceting, the, the amount of heap it gets reduced. And another uh, new feature in Lucene 8 are the interval queries. So, and um, I also have something because there are also some Solar users uh, here. So the next version of Solar will not be Solar 9. It will be Solar in Lucene 8.6. And there are some smaller changes. Um, 
as said before, the block max indexing is now finally also coming to Zola. So the short circuiting of queries is coming. And uh, you also have some minor stuff like a security info panel in the admin UI, which is now important because we got a lot of security requests for non-secured uh, Zola clusters. So you see a little bit more information. And there are also some streaming API improvements coming. And um, so here, yeah, sorry, uh, I forgot about that. But I think we are now uh, with the introduction. Uh, that's almost all. And now I want to get uh, some queries from you. And I hope Anshum already have detected some in the Slack channel. Yeah. So uh, we're, I'm going to get back to the new features in a bit. Uh, and all of them look really interesting. Uh, but uh, with the new version, what does it really mean for uh, for existing users? Is there something that they should look out for, uh, prepare themselves for? Is there something you want to highlight? Yes. Uh, so when you're upgrading to a new, uh, new Lucene version, but it same applies to Zola and Elasticsearch, um, there are, of course, some breaking changes. And one of those is, of course, you have to upgrade to Java 11. I hope most of you already did that um, for, for, for their current clusters, because that's the last, uh, last chance to do that. But you have to also keep in mind some other stuff. So for example, if you have older indexes uh, that you haven't re-indexed for a longer time, it might happen that you can use them with a new uh, versions of Zola or, or Lucene, because the backwards compatibility layer only allows uh, to read indexes from previous versions. So that means once you have uh, once you migrate to Lucene 9 or Zola 9, you can only read an index which was originally created, and that's very important, originally created with Java 8. Uh, that's something which is new. Uh, since uh, Lucene 7 and made uh, hot in somehow in Lucene 8. So actually, uh, previously it was possible to simply merge some index or optimize it to get it to the almost latest version. But there were some changes between Lucene 6 and Lucene 7 and Lucene 8 that uh, had some internal statistics uh, that were used for the scoring and so on, and also offsets which were partly negative in older indexes. And because of that, um, we have to put some, some stopping in it. You cannot upgrade those old indexes. You, you can still upgrade them to Lucene version 8. But the problem is Lucene 9 will still reject to open that index because uh, it, it somewhere in the index is also the original version uh, with which it was created stored in the index. And uh, if Lucene on opening the index figures out that uh, the index was created and uh, with a very old version and just upgraded sequentially from, from version to version, it, uh, it will complain um, to open it. There are some workarounds available, but that need uh, manual work. So you have to somehow change the index files uh, on your own by hacking something in Lucene. But in general, that's sort of supported configuration. So you should be prepared to update. And um, that's, uh, that's mainly uh, for what affects all the major Lucene versions. And then you have to install Java 11 or possibly later. And uh, when you're upgrading Zola, you should, uh, you, you should, yeah, the steps from Lucene, uh, from Zola 8 to Lucene 9 are not so complicated like they were from um, uh, Zola 7 to Zola 8, where you also had to uh, take care of the HTTP version 2 changes. And so you can easily do a rolling upgrade. If I'm not right here, Anshum, you may correct me. <laughs> that sounds absolutely right. Uh, but uh, just to summarize, there's no easy way to do this for anyone who's on Solar uh, or Lucene uh, or uh, Elastic version, uh, Elastic Search version that uses prior to a Lucene seven release, right? Uh, other than reindexing everything uh, and making it work. 
Uh, yeah, there, as I said, there are some other possibilities no, to yeah. do that, but it needs hacking and um, writing some Lucene code on your own. So <laughs> it's, it's very funny. You sometimes have customers which have really, really old indexes. They still want to, uh, to get into newer versions, and then it really gets funny. So, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, something we can talk another time about that. Uh, yes. That <laughs> um, so we were getting questions uh, on the channel. So uh, the question says, hey, I was attending ECIR this year, and they discussed about how great it is to see BlockMax Vand implemented in Lucene. But they also discussed on why it takes so long for researchers to see their ideas implemented in real world products. What's your take on this? <laughs> um, that's an interesting question. I was expecting I should explain how that works. Um, <laughs> uh, Feel but, free to, we can yeah, take that I, offline. I, 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 can, I, can, I can do that later. So, but basically, yes. Um, basically, uh, it started already um, in, I think, 2011 or 2012. I'm not 100% sure in which year it was. We had a talk here at Berlin Buzzwords, uh, where there was the first version um, of, uh, of BlockMax um, already proposed. And I, that was already before Lucene. Uh, what I think it was with Lucene 3.6, or maybe at the early time of Lucene 4, and we had those new codecs at that time, so there were already some ideas how to implement that. But the biggest problem was, as always, with uh, theoretical um, stuff. Uh, in theory, it's in most cases, it's quite easy to implement because you have something like an isolated problem uh, that that uh, where you can create your index just based on on the requirements uh, for that features. But because you know Lucene has a lot of more features than only scoring documents. Um, so so you you know you have numeric fields and all that stuff uh, that also um, are used in the scoring. And uh, the other thing is in Lucene it's possible to easily change. Uh, the scoring model that you're using. So, for example, in the past we were using TF-IDF, but now the default is DM25, but there are also other scoring algorithms that you can exchange, and that works without re-indexing the whole index. And because of that, uh, the encoding of the index, so the approach at that time was called max score, so that was to store the maximum score of every document uh, somehow in the in the posting list, and uh, the idea here was, uh, unfortunately, to calculate the score. You need to know the uh, the scoring algorithm that you want to use, and if you save that statistics in the index, you cannot switch it afterwards. And that uh, was something uh, what we have to change. And uh, also from the index file format, uh, if you wanted to create the max score index, you had to do that globally. So merging was not working. Uh, because there was no easy way uh, to save that information. And uh, so that's basically the reason why it took so long. And then uh, I think it was Adrian Grant and some other people a few, uh, two or three years ago were reading some newer papers about that, where people trying that old BlockMax stuff and uh, tried uh, to implement it. But actually, the implementation in Lucene is still different than what was originally proposed there because they were still using something like scores and uh, to store them in the index. And our approach was uh, to make it easier. And also we figured out that the index file format of Lucene is perfectly to put a second step on top of this max score algorithm, which is those block stuff. And because of that, it's a block max. And the block max uh, uh, algorithms uh, were proposed much later than the max score. So, um, but we now implemented that, and it's it's uh, part of the Lucene code base. And because the Lucene index already has something like a block structure in the postings, uh, so it was very very easy to add that. The more complicated work was to change the queries, and we are, it's still ongoing work to change more and more queries. Uh, to to use uh, the block marks um, 
stuff. So there's still spun queries and all that stuff, which are still have to be refactored and changed. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, Maya Sharbova uh, is also the newest uh, Lucene committer now. Yeah, uh, has a question. <laughs> uh, has a question. Can you discuss how Lucid is taking advantages of SIMD and processors that support this? Uh, what type of process? Uh, ah, okay. Ah, yeah. That's also something new. You can. Yeah. Uh, st <laughs> that's something new. Unfortunately, it's uh, it's still not a new feature. You can already try it out. I think. I'm not sure in which version it came. So. Maybe she can answer the question on her own. But um, uh, so uh, the new instructions in the CPUs, we can use them in Lucene, but at the moment we cannot do that directly. That's one of the backsides of uh, using Java as uh, your, your, uh, your backend system because we don't have any, uh, any possibilities to control how the, how the, how the compilation of the Java code um, uh, in the hotspot build, um, um, engine is doing when it creates machine code out of it. So, um, but recently in newer, uh, newer Java versions, there were uh, significant improvements. I'm not sure about which Java version you have minimally used. So it might be that it won't work with Java 8. I'm quite sure about that. Uh, but with Java 11, uh, you can be sure that the code is uh, compiled in a better way. And the trick here was to uh, the old usual Lucene trick. I don't want to get too much into the details. Uh, so it was also Adrian Grant. Um, I, I'm, I'm not sure if he's also here on the Berlin passwords, but uh, he started um, to work together and uh, try to optimize the Code, uh, co uh, the, uh, the index format a little bit and also the algorithms. So the virtual machine, the Java virtual machine is able based on the structure of the Java code to convert that into, um, into those uh, new instructions. So we have to look at our compression algorithms that they are compatible to that. Sometimes uh, we, we had to, to uh, to, to uh, change a little bit the encoding on disk uh, to need a little bit more space so I have longs and all that stuff and also in memory uh, we are using now byte buffers uh, to to and uh, to to load those posting lists but in that case you can parallelize a lot of stuff this is something like an ongoing process it does not work uh, with all CPUs uh, that are currently on market but Luckily, we don't need to compile our code. We are hoping that uh, the JDK is doing that. And in the past, this was already done. For example, uh, a lot of code like filters where we are working with bit sets is already highly optimized uh, to work with those new instructions. Also in older versions, it started with Java 7. And um, just some funny backgrounds, uh, those horrible bugs in Java 7 were exactly caused by the virtual machine doing the wrong stuff in that regard and creating assembly code which was not correct. So, and this happened uh, to lead to those crashes on some platforms or corrupt indexes and all that stuff. So, that's something we need two parts. We need to optimize our code and the new code, but there's also something else which might come a little bit later, and uh, that's going into Project Panama. Um, that's a new project uh, of the of OpenJDK that allows to have um, uh, to call non-Java methods from inside Java. So it's possible to create a method handle to call something like a library in, that is compiled in C code, and that might be another possibility. Uh, so we can ship Lucene optionally with some pre-compiled uh, binary blobs in the char file that can be directly accessed without speed. Uh, so the problem is you can still do that at the moment with Java, but the problem is the switch from the Java to, um, to the C code is very, very slow at the moment. And with the new APIs like method handles on C code looks like promising in that case. And this, uh, I also talked about that already 
uh, on 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 the Barcamp, uh, this will also improve the memory map directory, hopefully. But this is something which is may take uh, one year more, I think. I would expect Java 17 may have that features coming in. Um, there's a question with the new Panama, new Java abilities to call C code. Uh, just a curious question, and when can uh, we see Lucene on GPU? Uh, I, I didn't, uh, uh, can you repeat? <laughs> uh, with the new Panama Java ability is to call C code, uh, yeah. the question is like, when can we see Lucene uh, working on GPUs? Oh God. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think there are some issues open, but um, as always, the answer to all these questions is, um, Nobody's working at the moment for it, but if you're interested and you have the infrastructure to do that with the new Java versions, then just step in and uh, I hope uh, if you have some good ideas and you have experience in using um, GPUs, uh, then write some code, which is the C code layer that we might use, and then uh, we can see how to include that. Perfect. Yes, uh, I would have guessed. So I just asked that question because it it just came up and had like a ton of interest. A lot of people just said, yes, we want to ask yes. the same question. Um, so, to, okay, now. I uh, already posted uh, the Lucene issue with the GPU. So yeah. that's a long discussion issue. It has Lucene 7754, so it needs, it seems to be four or five years old. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the next question is from Matteo. Uh, please explain BM of BM and. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So um, I I think uh, I can do that because I have some slides for that already prepared. Because that's not so easy to explain with just talking. So okay, the slides are coming in. So uh, that's 10 times faster queries. So what's going on there? I, I will not go too much into the details because I think most people here will stop uh, thinking and just fetching their beers and uh, drinking too much of that. So um, uh, the, the, the main changes, as said before, uh, what, what's the background of, B, uh, B, uh, of the block max uh, one is, the idea is to short circuit all the queries uh, where the total count is not needed. So uh, you might know that already from Google. So for example, if you're searching in Google, you see uh, on top of your documents, uh, some information like uh, we found a lot of documents. Sometimes it's an exact number, like we found 100 documents, which is very seldom in most cases, but if you're very specific with keywords, it works. But at some point it will simply tell you uh, we found a lot of documents, uh, we don't tell you exactly how many they are. And uh, the reason for that is because uh, currently when Lucene is running uh, and executing a query, the problem is to actually get the top document, the top 10 documents that you're displaying in your search results, it has to process all the hits because it has to calculate the score and put uh, the document into a priority queue and the priority queue, so whenever a new uh, document comes in, it just puts it into the priority queue and at the end only the top ranking documents are left over because everything that's not part of the priority key, uh, queue is falling out uh, at the end. There are already some, in, uh, some optimizations in that process, so for example, if it figures out the calculated score is too low already. It doesn't even in, try to insert it into the priority queue and just throws it away immediately, but you still have to calculate the score of that document. And the idea here is how can we uh, make Lucene uh, ignore um, and uh, not ignore, ignore those hits which are not competitive at all. And uh, the idea as told before was to put some additional information into the index. So during execution of the query, you can figure out without actually calculating the score and collecting the hit uh, that, uh, that a bunch of documents, which are in most cases somehow in a block together in your index. So you see something like the posting list consists of blocks of 100 documents, for example, 
you can say, okay, the next one of the documents are not interesting at all because the score that would be calculated based on the statistics of that block is too low, and so I can just jump over the block. And um, this new change was uh, implemented for some queries, like the term query, uh, where, where, which is easy, you're just jumping into a term and then you're consuming the posting list. But all the other stuff like uh, the W in the RAND uh, block marks is then related to Boolean query and there it's very important for these junctions. If you have a conjunction, in most cases it's not so bad because um, yeah, you're just ending together your terms. But if you are having an OR query where you, where you are any hit, it's, it's enough to have something like a stop word in your query. And that's also the reason why in the past most people said we don't want to have stop words, stop words in your index, because on an OR query, uh, that gets horrible, horrible slow because you have to iterate the posting list of all those queries. And uh, then it takes very, very long time. So you have queries taking two, three, four seconds sometimes for large indexes if you're asking for a stop word. And also for phrase queries. And uh, there was also recently addition of constants for phrase. But how, uh, how does it work now? So what we are doing is we, uh, we add not something like the score to our, um, uh, to our, um, to our, uh, posting lists. So that was the original proposal. Uh, uh, and this is why it took a little bit longer to do that. The idea here is because we still want to have the information and change, uh, change for example, the scoring model, like from, T, uh, from TFIDF, we want to switch to PM25 or something completely different. And because of that, we did not store something like a single value in the, in, in, in our posting list. But instead, we are score, uh, storing the maximum term frequency for a block in the posting list. And we are uh, putting in the norm. And with that information for our whole block, you can, of course, calculate the score, the maximum score of that block, and then can say, OK, those documents are not interesting, and we just skip over them. And because of that, there are still some requirements on that. So for example, uh, you are not completely free with your scoring algorithm. So, for example, if the TF raises, uh, so if the TF goes up monotone, uh, it must uh, the score must also go up monotone. So, if you have something like a scoring algorithm, which uh, which has a, uh, it was interestingly yesterday in the evening in the talk there was some discussion about that maybe people having uh, putting repeating their words should be. Uh, sh should get a, a bad score at the end because you know in in some shops this bad. But if you have something like that, you cannot use that approach. So the TF, if it uh, if it goes up, uh, the that must be same. And for the norm, uh, it's it's very similar um, to do that. So the document frequency and all that stuff need to be somehow predictable. So it must be monotone. So the score is expectable because otherwise uh, the algorithm would not work. And the cool thing now with the block stuff is that this, um, this can also be done on a multi-level multi approach. And if you see that multi-level, you can think of scoring, uh, storing that in the skip list. And that was a great idea that, um, uh, that we had at that time. Um, so the original paper for that was, I think, not long ago. I think it was in Sigir 11, uh, using Blockmax indexes. And so how does it work at all? So basically, what is a skip list? So when, uh, and that's uh, the main slide, which hopefully explains what, what is happening. So uh, what you see here, you have a, you have, for example, a skip list for Lucene and for search. So you have, you have a Lucene search, that's your query. And you're searching, uh, then you're first looking up Lucene and search in your term dictionary, and then you get a list, uh, the posting list. And in the posting list, it's just a, a list of numbers. So in that case, Lucene is included in documents uh, 3, 7, 8, 15, 16, 19, 32, 49, 51, 56, and something like that. And uh, the same is for the search query, yeah, for, for search 
for the search term, you also have some document numbers. So there are two possibilities. A lot of people know for end queries, you have uh, those leapfrog approach. So you're jumping going forward in the list, and that's why the skip list is there. So for example, for an end query, you want to find the overlap. So that means the first hit is the number seven, where both are inside. So that means you are your first moving the Lucene iterator forward and then you are on, on seven, but then you are asking uh, the other iterator, please go forward, but the minimum document I'm interested in would be document number seven. And then uh, the second iterator, which is positioned on search, is moving forward. And um, so it skips already the four, uh, the four, five, uh, the four and the five document. So, for example, and then once they are both landed on seven, uh, the next one is a fifteen, and so they are jumping sometimes. So to help with that jumping, you have those skip lists. So when something is in the first block, which is on three, there is information that you can jump to document number fifteen by just going there, and so it can skip over all those documents because they are somehow compressed and the size of those compression is not known. So it knows where to go and then it, uh, it's, it's on the 15 document. And um, the idea here now is uh, to add to that skip list also that information. And now from the multi skip list levels is also we have said in multiple levels. So if somebody's on the first block, he can also say, okay, I need to go to a document 49 uh, so it can just jump over everything and then it lands on 33 or maybe on 46 and then from there it can iterate further and you see here that's an easy way to skip and now what's coming on here is what we are doing here is we are simply storing the term frequency the maximum term frequency uh, for those um, information like uh, inside that skip list so we know uh, that the maximum term frequency of the, the Lucene in documents 3, 7, 8, and 15, no, 3, 3, 3, 7, and 8 is 3. So that means if we, we are already during collecting the documents, we know that the score is, for example, the current score is something 25, and based on the norm, we know we need a minimum term frequency of 3. Then we can say, okay, I'm asking this. Uh, the uh, the skip list and uh, say okay let's jump forward G get me to a document where the term frequency is greater than three and in that case it can also use the multi-level skip list in that case it can jump to document 33 and jump over two blocks already and um, in that case it's then uh, possible to uh, uh, to, to skip over those documents. The only information that you lose, of course, is the total number of documents that were hit. And uh, that's why, uh, why sometimes you cannot use that at all. But for example, if you are not interested in the top number of documents, you can quickly uh, uh, go over them. Yeah. So um, if there Great. are any other questions, we can also yep. think about that later. So thanks, Uwe, for that great explanation. Uh, super useful. Uh, there is a question about, do you have to change uh, the version in config.xml for solar to 9.0 or 8.6 in order to use uh, this feature? Does the config in solar require any changes uh, in terms of explicitly specifying the version? To use the um, no, not necessarily. Um, so, so basically, there's in most cases a problem with upgrading Zola. So that's maybe some addendum to what I said before. And I think um, I think uh, Anshum, you will uh, confirm that. So whenever you are upgrading Zola, you should look into the version numbers of your schema XML because sometimes if you're keeping the old version, you get very, very bad defaults. So I have a lot of customers with very, very old schemas uh, where the default is to not enable doc values on their indexes. And then they are complaining that their heap space overflows because uh, they just upgraded Lucene. We're hoping that doc values are enabled and everything works. And then 
uh, they get uh, get a heap space out of memory and all that stuff. So basically, but, but for that features, you don't need to change anything. You just need to upgrade the new Lucene version. Um, so for the block max stuff, to get that feature in Zola, you have to wait for 8.6 coming out hopefully soon. And then it will be enabled. I think the default is still that uh, all the results are counted. I'm not 100 percent sure about that. But um, uh, the result format will also change a little bit. So you get the information about the number of hits collected and some information if it's an exact, exact number or if it's not exact. So it's something like a Boolean. And I think you can only tell, uh, also tell him during the query execution by a query parameter. I'm not sure if this is yet implemented already. I think the default is 1,000. Uh, so, yeah. I yeah. I don't. Yeah, I. I think that it was supposed. It's supposed to be done. It's not done yet. It's not yet done yet. Yeah. So so basically, yeah. you can simply say, I want to get exact numbers up to maybe ten thousand documents, and then once uh, the ten thousand documents are collected, it simply stops uh, stops uh, counting exactly, and then it will use uh, the skip list to jump over uh, the documents. So, but, but that's something you have to explicitly enable, and you need to explicitly enable that because it does not work with all types of queries. So, for example, if you enable faceting on your queries, it won't work because then you would also get incomplete facet counts and all that stuff. So, which is not really wanted, but uh, in that case, you have to think a little bit about how to do that in your code. So one recommendation would be to just execute the query without facets, show the results very, very early, and then in the background, calculate the facets and deliver it to your website, maybe with an Ajax call or something like that. And that would be some possibility how to do that. But in general, I think everything keeps the default. Yep. Um... We have another question. I remember some discussion about vector ANN search in a JIRA issue. Is there anything in the works for Lucene 9.0, or is this still being discussed? Uh, happy to get an update about the ongoing discussions as well. Oh, no. So vector okay. ANN search. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alexander was at IT because I have the, the channel open. Yeah. yeah as, so, so basically, uh, the, the discussions are still going on, um, and uh, it's very, very funny. The issue is open one year, and there recently came in a new approach to do the same. And I know, for example, that Elasticsearch has its own approach at the moment. They so they are also doing um, doing doing something like uh, indexing of vectors, but they have a different approach, and everything is somehow waiting for a Lucene internal implementation. But currently, people are discussing, so there's an issue open on Zola. On the Zola issue, there's a proposal to implement it only in Zola, which is somehow similar to what happens in Elasticsearch. And then um, uh, the people from uh, from uh, around Mike McCandles and Mike, um, uh, the two bikes from Amazon are, um, are looking into that issue and they already implemented something. And the final step now is, as always, it sounds cool in, 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 in isolation, but at the end you want to have something like generic, how we, how we want to uh, index those vectors. And the newest issue now opened, I think, on May 20 or something like that was about we need something like an abstract API for the posting format and an API uh, and something like a standard interface to access posting format so we can implement both proposals of posting formats. And so we need to see something in the overlap. So we don't have to be that too much glued into the queries somehow. So we need something like the queries. And so there needs to be something like that because the current approach that was posted on Lucene is is not a new index format. The, the original version, I think, uh, that was open one year ago, was using payloads and doc values, but I'm not 100% sure. I think it was payloads or doc values. I think doc values in that case. And I think the, the Elasticsearch version is also using doc values for that, um, which is 
which is just a workaround to store that information, but it has some overhead on the query time. So in that case, uh, we would need something like a special index format. Um, uh, so something that describes the index format and then API to access those structures on the lower level. So it's hot at the moment again, but um, I would not expect that to come for Lucene 9.0, but uh, as always, help us, help us with that. And I think there are a lot of problems to solve, uh, like for example, Lucene is using this segmented index structure, so merging gets, gets very, very expensive and all that stuff. So uh, we have to find solutions for that. So, and we were also discussing yesterday in the other question round, um, uh, where, where it was already discussed. So it would be good to have the, the vectors in Lucene, but you cannot simply query only on the vector. So you always need something like a combined approach. So that looks like learning, learning to rank or something like that. So you're first getting something like 1,000 top ranking results by conventional search. And then the top 1,000 results, you would go and use uh, the vectors in the index uh, to get the final top 10 or something like that. So doing that on the whole index is likely to blow up, I think. Does this explain a little bit? Yes, yes, uh, sounds good to me. Um, I'm gonna switch some track and uh, ask you about the build system, considering a lot of effort has gone into switching over from Ant, that's something that we've been using forever, uh, over to Gradle. Uh, where does it stand right now uh, and what does it mean for the users? Yeah, as I said, I hope it will come to Lucene 9. They are really uh, very, very info, uh, very, we are really on uh, uh, putting that in because there are some other questions I've seen, another question coming a little bit later, uh, which is also related to that and it also, all, and somehow links together. So in, in, uh, in, in very short, we have a working Gradle build at the moment. So um, uh, the only thing that doesn't work yet is you cannot build a release out of it, but a lot of other stuff is already working. So it is for the daily work of a developer. So for example, if you want to submit a new feature uh, into Luzine and you have a patch and a pull request, and uh, when you're developing that, I would really recommend you to use the new Gradle build. So you just have to call it Gradle W um, and then you, you, you can run everything. We also already have pre-commit and all that stuff. And you will see a significant uh, improvement in test running times because you know, also the Lucene build was doing a lot of stuff in parallel when executing the tests. But uh, if you have looked at the Lucene builds, especially when you're doing Zola, it takes something like two minutes until it starts to compile Zola. Uh, although it does nothing on the Lucene at all, it just iterates through all the Ant projects, which all find out there's nothing to do <laughs> and compile, and then it starts to uh, maybe change, compile one file in Zola. So this should be really, really faster because Ant does not really work. So um, developing with Gradle should be a fun. Now again, we also have some new checks already which are only implemented in Gradle. So for example, in Zola, if you have wrong logger usage, so Eric Erickson committed something that immediately warns you like with the forbidden APIs, uh, for example, to not concat strings in your log messages and instead use those curly brackets uh, and the parameters, or you should not never ever call a method in those logging parameters and all that stuff. So that's something uh, because, because that was already slowing down. So that's something which is a new check only working this way. But you cannot do a release at the moment. So because the packaging is not yet working, but uh, I was working on the Java docs uh, for something like two uh, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, and that's already very, very fine. So I think the packaging is more or less the last step, and then we can release. So okay. I would, would suggest just try it out. Uh, there's also the other problem is with backporting patches to earlier versions, and uh, that's something because at some point we want to change 
the built infrastructure a little bit so there's a direct infrastructure sorry to uh, be more aligned to greater builds which we cannot do at the moment because both is at the same time in the build system so there's a lot of customization in gradle at the moment so if you import it into your um, into your favorite ide you might get some problems with it so yeah okay Great. Um, I have two questions on my mind right now. Uh, and one of them is the hard one. The other one, not so much. Uh, I'll put the hard one out there first so that we can use all of the rest of the time for the other one. Um, so what is the background behind the plan to decouple Lucene with solar? <laughs> is this now the simple or the hard one? <laughs> this is the hard one. The other one uh, <laughs> is a nice little one, yes. <laughs> Okay, yeah. Uh, so that's really some uh, something. So um, I can I can only so please excuse. In some cases, I'm also a little bit biased because uh, everybody has its own personal opinion about that. So actually, I, I'm quite open, and I also voted plus one for the split of Luzin and Zola. But actually, I'm somehow in between. To me, I was working on the Gradle build. It doesn't matter to me, but actually the whole thing started like that. So you could also ask why was Luzine and Zola put together uh, half a year, uh, no, 10 years ago, and now we are suddenly trying to split from each other. That's very, very hard to explain to somebody. And so I was already expecting that this question will come here. And I can tell you, uh, one thing, it won't happen, the split before uh, Zola 9 will come out and Luzin 9 will come out because uh, that will make it even more complicated and I think it will also wait a little bit until the Gradle build is finished. So that's, but that's only my personal opinion in that case, but most of the other committers agree with that. But how did it happen? So the reason for that why the question came up again. So it came up already in 2014. I remember when we were sitting in the restaurant after some earlier burning buzzwords in 2014 and 2015, and we were discussing about uh, uh, that uh, Lucine and Zola might split or might not split. So of course, there are always some people who don't like Zola, so they, they want to split on the other hand, uh, Zola is really something which is also good for Luzine because we do have more extensive testing. So there were always those conflicting parties. And I was saying I would, would have Luzine and Zola together. But what happened is when we started to do the Gradle build, which is already working on Luzine and Zola perfectly. So I have no problem. I see no reason to split because of the Gradle build. But the Gradle build very, very clearly showed that Lucene and Zola, although they are the same project, have a completely different style of first building the project. So there was nothing. So in, in fact, what happens, that's also one reason why the ANT will take so long. The first thing that happens is ANT is iterating all the other projects, generates all the char files, and then the char files are copied over to the Zola directory, and then they are consumed from there to build um, uh, to build solar. So that really looks on the first thing like, yeah, that's somehow separate. And when you look closer into the Gradle build, and when you're doing a lot of stuff, you see there are other checks in it. So it's really separate. And then there were also some, some, some statistics done uh, a little bit later, like the number of persons who are working on that uh, on, and figured out there are a lot of the uh, lot of committers working on both projects. Some of them are only for us forced to work on both projects. So in that case, if you do a backwards incompatible change in Luzine, of course you have to touch the Zola code. So um, uh, so this is not really an argument, but um, it has shown that now in the newer time, most developments uh, are really separate from each other. So, uh, uh, so Zola and uh, Zola has its own uh, iteration of new features. You also see, for example, as I said before, the Blockmax one was first there in Lucene, came out with version 8.0, and I would have wished that with version 8.1, 
a 8.0, also the block mark stuff would have been appeared in Zola. Because if you look at the patch, it's not really complicated. So, but unfortunately, it took till 8.6 and it's still not out uh, to get that sh query short circuit stuff into Zola. So you see here, uh, if it would really be one project, that would have been one single commit uh, changing Luzine and Zola at once somehow. Okay, so that's a little bit ideal, but uh, in, in that case. But now the question, why did we move together in 2011? So the reason for that was a little bit different, contrary. The problem at that time was that uh, Zola and Luzin were from two completely different persons and they had a completely different history. And uh, before Zola even joined the Apache Software Foundation, there were a lot of... Um, implementations uh, that should have been better placed in Luzine at that time, they were going to Zola and it, this didn't stop at that time. It was all the time. So it was starting to, we only developed that in Zola, but it was not somehow merged or not even thought of to do that in Luzine because of the re release schedule, because Luzine had a very, very slow release schedule, I think, and Zola was faster. Could also be the other way around. I don't remember that. And because of that, uh, the, some of the stuff was implemented in Zola uh, mostly. And one famous example is in Zola, there was tons of analyzers for different languages. And yeah, one example is word delimiter filter, which you see people still hate. <laughs> but um, and uh, because of that, so at some point, and of course, all those stuff was not usable for, for projects outside, of, 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 although it's only Luzine internal features because an analyzer has nothing to do with Zola. So the idea here was to clean up the whole code base, move the stuff where it belongs. So for example, function queries um, were moved to Luzine, uh, analyzers were moved to Luzine, um, and that really helped to clean up the whole project and it also was a great success for other people using Lucene. So uh, a lot of customers of mine were really happy to not no longer need to import solar dependencies just uh, for your own Lucene implementation, just to get the analyzers. And of course, also for uh, this was a good step forward for Elasticsearch because Elasticsearch was able to use uh, all those analyzers. So you can see that from both cases. So. Um, yeah, word developer filter, WDF. <laughs> it means VDF in German. Yeah, funny, <laughs> Alan. Uh, yeah, so, um, but Alan also hates it, I think. Yeah, I, I was just looking here into the. <laughs> yes, so that, uh, that's some reasons. And now we are at a state where the whole thing is really good. Of course, there are still the risk that it can diverge, anyways. So it, the same can happen. But um, there's also the other thing because now the, Lucy, the commit, committers, uh, we are getting more and more committers. It's a good time to split. But it's not only splitting the projects. Uh, so we could do the same. We could just fork and uh, both will be under the same Lucene top level project. But the idea here is to make it a own uh, Apache Software Foundation top level project. So at the end, it will also be solar.apache.org and all that stuff. So uh, that's a good way forward. And about the dependencies, I think the approach will be very similar to uh, what, uh, what Elasticsearch is currently doing. So uh, because a lot of people were complaining about, yeah, if, if not everything from Lucene is immediately tested in Zola, uh, that will be very, very hard. So that means in contrast to the early versions of Zola, where this was not the case, we must go some route to say, okay, uh, we are using snapshot versions from some shared repository, uh, like the Apache snapshot repository, just with some date code and it's regularly updated and something like that. So that's approach which Elasticsearch is doing. And I think uh, that might also happen with Zola. And uh, the other thing is, if you want to align major releases or not, uh, my personal opinion is we won't align minor releases anymore 
because uh, if there's a uh, Lucene version 8.1, 8.2, 8.3, doesn't matter at all, it can still be Zola uh, 8.5, 8.6, 8.7, doesn't matter. But whenever the major version changes, there needs a, to be a communication because you remember from my all, earlier talks, we are only backwards compatible to the major version before. So that means with the Lucene 9, you can only read Lucene 8 indexes. And so there's somehow a problem. So it, this means we, we also at least at need Least, uh, need, at least need something like a major version update also in Zola at some point. So I would think of it will stay the same, major versions will stay aligned, but the minor versions not. So I think that's everything I can say about, say about uh, the split here. And I would tend to wait a little bit until um, Lucene 9 is uh, released and the development of Lucene 8 and Zola 8 stops or at least it's only backwards compatible changes. At that point, I think the split will happen. So that's my best guess, but as always, uh, it's never sure. Anshom, you are silenced. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah he was doing so... his emails, I think. <laughs> So the last question that uh, he covered the, the previous one pretty well. Uh, the, so do you have, considering Lucene is a rather complex system, uh, do you have any pointers or suggestions on how new contributors could engage and uh, contribute uh, to the project and to the community? Um, yeah, so so I, I, I think for, for some new contributors, it's really, really hard because uh, there is uh, not too much going on on the development mailing list. Mostly it's done in Jira tickets and you're flooded by Jira tickets. We split those mailing lists uh, not long ago. Because of that, so the real discussions are now going on on the development list and the Jira issues are all going and the GitHub pull requests are going to another mailing list. So that helps a little bit. So it makes it easier for new, uh, new committers. But uh, there's still the problem uh, that most people are, because it's a huge, really huge code check, you don't know where to start. And because of that, uh, we have something like tagging on our Jira issues, uh, which are useful for beginners. And uh, mostly this is this was done also for uh, for Google Summer of uh, Code, but uh, something similar. So there are some issues which are a little bit easier uh, to start with, and just start and uh, submit a pull request, which which is much easier than before. Uh, now that Apache Software Foundation has included full support for GitHub. So you don't need to mark with uh, Git repositories by the ASF, just fork it on GitHub and send a pull request. And uh, we can also merge it for you than the committers very, very easily. So I think it's much easier to do that. So just come there and submit a pull request, but of course, don't forget to uh, register for the mailing list uh, and um, and ask you questions there. Though you can also talk uh, talk in discussions or maybe go to other issues and talk with us. So that's that should be something. And if you have something which was really useful for you, just give it to us. We are happy uh, to see something like uh, the recent contributions, like the talk before about those. Um, about those new posting format for those indexes with many, many fields and that, uh, which is really something a few people need, but uh, that was really something. And the person is now also a committer who proposed it originally. So that's also something you can uh, keep in mind if you are working together with us. We are all friendly. Sometimes we are a little bit harsh and the policeman is arguing with you <laughs> about uh, the bad code you are writing, but don't take that too serious. Great. Yes, that, uh, I hope that uh, that's going to motivate enough people to come in and start contributing uh, to the projects uh, that mm. we create to see. Um, 
Okay, uh, I think we don't have any more questions. We're also out of time. So thank you so much, Uwe, for answering all yeah. those hard and not so hard questions, uh, all sorts of them. Uh, so yes, thank you so much.